Tell me, Shadow, why should we trust you? Taking cover sucks with my wings broken like this. It was absolutely necessary to break them to stop me. Stardust asked as he took cover behind the entrance of the room that held the memory machine. Yes, I answered as I reloaded. Don't you remember anything? And I do, but it's all a little fuzzy. I'm still a bit woozy from the machine. By the way, this would be a lot easier if I had my rifle instead of this stupid pistol. Where is my rifle? He responded. Ah, shit. This is gonna be awkward and probably piss him off. Your rifle that you had when you were pride, or the one from before that? Is that really what's happening right now? Solstice asked. Can't you just worry about what's happening right now instead of some stupid gun? Stardust took a few shots at some security ponies across the next room. I'm talking about any rifle right now. Well, your rifle you had as pride is probably back in the kingdom, and your other one... Uh, your other one got sort of vaporized when I destroyed Mill City Tower because I accidentally left it behind when I left. I replied sheepishly. Thanks. Got anything else I can use for now? He asked as he reloaded his pistol. Just give him your plasma rifle! Doorstop interjected. I took out my plasma rifle and tossed it to him before he could say anything and continued to try shooting at the three security ponies at the entrance to medical. You said you wanted to end this place once and for all. What did you mean by that? I feel like getting radiation sickness from another exploding stable... He landed a shot on one of the security ponies. I don't want to destroy the place. Just that stupid machine. I want to convince the inhabitants here that their entire lives have been a lie. What's the plan, though? We gotta to go to the general. Her office and quarters are across the hall from medical. If we kill her and take her hostage, we'll either have a bargaining chip or we'll have a stricken a large blow to the hierarchy of the stable. He responded as he killed the other two security ponies. You guys go. Doorstop and I will stay with Dr. Olympus to protect her. We'll get her out of here and clear a path for you two, Solstice said. What about him? I asked, pointing at the pony we took with us on the way to the top floor. I'll carry him like I did with Stardust on the way here. I can still handle myself with some pony on my back, Windthrasher answered. Stardust started to blush a bit. She carried me in here. Yeah, something wrong with that? Solstice asked. No. <clears throat> and by the way, why are you helping us? Aren't you supposed to be one of the bad guys? Stardust replied. Let's just say the Enclave screwed me over one too many times, and I didn't give me the respect I deserved of my title. Solstice explained. Doorstop stomped his hoof on the ground to get her attention. Enough of this. We need to do something instead of sitting here making a regular conversation. We all came out of the room where the memory machine was. I went over to the injured security pony. I kicked his gun away before he could grab it again and asked, The general, where is she? If you don't tell me, I'm going to enjoy torturing you. I don't know. She pretty much disappeared when the shit hit the fan, he replied. She must be hiding in the emergency escape tunnel. I said, assuming she'd hide in the most obvious place possible. I can see why you'd think that, but the tunnel here was sealed to prevent ponies from somehow opening it and getting into the office in case of a break-in, Stardust said. That's so stupid. Stable deck wouldn't make something like that easy to access from the exit end, I said in disbelief. She's a bit paranoid, Doorstop said from behind us. Anyway, we're going on ahead while you two find the general. Most likely, she's in her quarters. She has a gun in there she keeps for situations like this. All right, we'll check there. But if she's not there, I'm sure we'll find her some way out of the woodwork after we deplete the population here a bit. I responded. Shadow, I hope you don't plan on killing any of the inhabitants. Stardust interrupted. They're a victim of this fucked up place like I am. The only reason they're going to attack you is because they were ordered to. Or if they're scared. We were trained not to fear things, but realistically, no pony's afraid of nothing. Right. I forgot about the inhabitants of the stable. Why does there always have to be some sort of extra challenge in situations like this? 
No, I won't kill any of the cadets unless it's by accident. Just don't do it accidentally on purpose, Doorstop said as he walked over with the others. We'll be waiting for you outside the stable. Try and keep yourselves safe. After they were gone, Stardust and I entered the corridor to what would normally have been the Overmare's office. It was a small stairway of three steps going up after turning the corner to the door. For some reason, there weren't any guards like I expected there to be. Either she's not here, or she's deadlier than I'm expecting. Hey, Stardust. What's the general like? Is she going to be hard to deal with? <laughs> she shouldn't be that tough. She's a bit of a hard ass when it comes to the inhabitants, but because of her eye, she's a klutz. There was this one time during the proctoral exam she was overseeing. She tripped on something one of us threw on the floor, just out of her line of sight. She wasn't too happy about it, but was impressed with my ability to take advantage of the enemy's tactical disadvantages. He explained. I? What's wrong with it? I asked as we entered the office. She's missing her right eye. He replied while taking aim at the, with the plasma rifle. I looked at him confused. But in that memory of her when you escaped, she had two eyes. He chuckled. She had a glass eye. When I shot her during my escape, it destroyed it, and I guess she never replaced it. But as long as I've known her, she's always been blind on one side. Now, let's hurry up. I'm gonna go check under the desk. That's a great place to hide in an overmare's office. Believe me, I know from experience. I said, unholstering my revolver. I opened the door, and when I didn't see her, I walked over to the desk. She wasn't under there like I expected, so I turned my attention to the terminal on the desk and started to browse through the various files. Luckily, the terminal wasn't locked. There were quite a few files on the terminal, but not many of them proved useful to me. But one caught my eye. It was a list of all the stats of each cadet in the stable. I scrolled down to Stardust's name and saw that it said deceased next to his name, and his stats were blank. Then I noticed he was staring at me from across the room. What are you doing? This is no time to be snooping into her business. But I always snoop in situations like this. It's not like we're in any immediate danger at the moment. Plus, this could help us out. I replied. He sighed. Can we just keep looking for her? Alright, fine. When we find her, you can ask how she explained your sudden death to the cadets. I said. What? I guess she had to make some sort of excuse for my absence in the stable, but now I'm curious as to what she said was the cause of death. He said, scratching his chin. We proceeded to the next door in the other room. Above it read, General Quarters. She lives in the same area as her office? Yeah, that's just the way the stable was designed, I guess. I tried opening the door, but of course it was locked. You know what the door being locked means, right? She's got to be in there. Shows what you know about tactics. She could have locked it from the outside, you know. He said with a bit of a scoff. I started to pick the lock as I replied, Yeah, but there's still a chance she's in there. Think about it. She knows that you think like that, and could use it to her advantage to throw you off her trail. He stammered. But, damn. You got a point there. With a pop and a click, the door was unlocked and open to a small barrage of gunshots coming from behind the Novaturn sofa. Shadow 1, Stardust 0! Yeah, 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 you told me so. Let's just get this over with. I waited until she stopped shooting and said, Hey, Cyclops, nice aim you got there. Also, didn't your mother teach you to be polite? You should at least hear your enemy out before resorting to violence. I don't listen to terrorists! Security's on the way here as we speak. I suggest you surrender now, or let your friends be slaughtered like the last time you crossed me, Stardust. The general exclaimed. Security here sucks. I already killed three of them across the hall. He retorted. Let me rephrase that. Enclave reinforcements will arrive here shortly, and make quick work of you and your friends. I can't believe your friends were stupid enough to break in here and think they could just walk back out with you she said before taking a couple more shots. I heard a click. Fuck! Technical difficulties? I asked. Fuck you! She shouted as she jumped out from behind the sofa and charged us with a baton. 
Stardust and I avoided every swing she threw our way. Then, out of nowhere, Stardust grabbed the end of the baton and twisted it out of her grip. Before she had a chance to notice that she was disarmed, she was struck in the back of the head with the baton and knocked out. Don't you think that was a bit too easy? This whole time everything's been pretty simple except for going into the memory machine. I asked. If you think about it, no. This place isn't equipped to handle an attack from the outside world. Only rebellious inhabitants or inhabitants that have learned the truth about the place. Come to think of it, I don't even think they trained us on how to deal with an outside attack. Stardust said. Really? They didn't train you on anything like this? That's surprising considering the reason they all have all of you here. I responded. So what do we do with her? I have no idea. We could kill her, but she's all knocked out and stuff. Seems kind of unfair. Bring her to a cell is a bad idea. Probably because there's security there. He replied. You know, if you were still a bad guy, you would have come up with something by now. I said, trying to urge him to think harder. Stardust had a look on his face. The kind of face you see when you have a stroke of genius hit. We'll just take her hostage. No one in this place has the balls to shoot through her to kill us. The only one I could think of that would do that is Doorstop, and, well, he's on our side. Just hold her in your magic with your gun pointed at her, and I'll lead the way. At least we sort of have a plan now. But what else are we going to do besides taking her hostage so that we aren't killed? I asked. Well, first things first. We gotta destroy that goddess's damn machine. After that, we need to figure out a way to convince the inhabitants here to fight for us. Or evacuate somehow. He replied. This is so stupid. We're literally running around a hostile stable with no plan, a barely conscious hostage, and no friends to back us up. This is a bad idea. We should have just gone with the others and come up with a plan to get back in here and end things. Calm down. We'll be fine. Just pick her up with your magic and follow my lead. Stardust said, trying and somewhat failing to reassure me. I did what he said and followed him back through the corridor and back into the main hallway of the upper level. There wasn't any security for some reason, but then I heard a click from the stable PA system. Attention, stable inhabitants! This is Captain Plank of the Grand Pegasus Enclave. The moment you've all been training for has arrived. Hostiles have invaded the stable. Find any weapons that you can to protect yourselves and gather in the atrium to await further instructions. The Enclave is here to help. Stardust looked surprised. I'll be amazed if even half the population actually goes to the atrium. Uh, Why? I asked, confused. All of our lives, they told us the outside world was instant death. That the only way to step hoof out there was with a lot of safety measures, like taking a ton of rad safe and wearing a radiation suit or power armor. The reason no pony's ever gone outside is because the stable has no radiation suits, no anti-radiation drugs, and the power armor stored here doesn't have that kind of lead plating. I've never heard of Captain whatever his name was, and I know none of our others know who he is just by the way he announced himself. And to all the other inhabitants of the stable except for the staff, he's an outsider. If anything, the inhabitants won't trust him unless they're total morons that don't listen during training, or unless the instructors tell them to. When I was still living here, I was trained to never trust the unknown, no matter who they say they're affiliated with. When I escaped this place, I wondered how they got in and out without opening the stable door and attracting attention. I thought about it. They must have a separate door somewhere on the upper levels that leads to the outside. I mean, think about it. We're under an outside theater. Not the mountain or somewhere that's uh, super enclosed by a rock hard, like most stables. There'd be no sweat for the Enclave to build a separate access tunnel into the stable and take over. Stardust explained as he slowly proceeded down the hallway towards security. I can see why you'd think that, but if there was another entrance, don't you think Dr. Limbus would have led us that way instead of the front door? Also, shouldn't we be going the other way? I asked. He sighed. It would be faster to just head straight for the stairs down, but I need to destroy the memory machine. We have a hostage, so we shouldn't have any issues from security unless one of them wants to be a hero and try saving the general. Just past security in the holding cells is the armory. We can get more weapons there, like I said before, and possibly something to blow up the re-education machine. 
Out of all the time you were in here, did you ever stop to think they would have been getting bullets for the past 200 years? Heh. <laughs> you can make bullets from old ones, Shadow. All you need is something to melt and reshape the metal. He replied. What about gunpowder? I asked with a raised eyebrow. Okay, I guess I never thought about that. He retorted. Stop right where you are! A security pony shouted from in front of us, after jumping out from behind a doorway. Nope, I said as I pointed Dreamwalker at the security pony and fired directly at his head. Blood splattered all over the wall, and a split second before his body was thrown against it by the force of the bullet, cascading through his skull. You didn't need to kill him so quickly. Make sure not one of the programmed victims before shooting next time, Stardust said. I rolled my eyes. You realize that we're on the top level of the stable where the vault inhabitants aren't allowed, right? None of them are going to be up here. Yes, I realize that. It's just you're so quick to kill them that I'm afraid you might accidentally kill some pony you shouldn't when we get downstairs. He argued. Fine, I'll be more careful. I replied as I checked to see if any pony else was in the security office. Shouldn't there be more than one pony here? He shook his head. Not in a situation like this. They probably sent most of the security downstairs to help the Enclave reinforcements take control of the situation. I hope the others made it out before the Enclave got here. Doorstop and Solstice are both excellent fighters. I'm sure they got out before the Enclave got here. What I think is going on right now is they think that they are still in here. Though they're looking for them, and us, if they somehow found out we split up. I said, hoping the same thing he was just on the inside. He sighed. Armory should be this way. He led me down the hall and around a corner to where the door, similar to the one I saw in Stardust Memory, for the room stored the power armor. Unlike the one in the power armor storage, this one had a terminal in front of it. This shouldn't be too hard to get into. I figured as much. It's one reason I wanted you with me. I don't have time to be hacking terminals. I moved up to the terminal and hooked in the Mark II. Just like the terminal in the lobby at Mill City Tower, it bypassed the need to hack the terminal at all, and unlocked it right away. That was easy. Stardust laughed as he opened the door. I'm not surprised. This level's off limits, so they don't need to worry about too much about keeping the room locked. It's mostly just in case of a rebellion of some kind. This keeps the cadets from getting the more powerful weapons. They, sh they wouldn't have had the time to sit here and hack a terminal while they were trying not to be captured by stable security or whatever. Inside the room were racks and racks of high-end weapons, from sniper rifles to pistols, magical energy rifles to plasma, plastic explosives and grenades, shelves filled with ammo for just about every kind of weapon in the room, and some things I didn't see in the room. Now this is what I call a haul. We could make a killing if we took everything here and sold it back in the kingdom. Stardust just rolled his eyes. We aren't here to enrich ourselves. We're here to save the ponies who have been bearing washed by this place. Actually, that's why I'm here. You're here to save me, but in all reality, by saving me, you've caused this chain of actions. So, let's go. I know. I think? But, what's wrong with getting a little something up for it? We could use some caps and the ammo, I said, walking over to the ammo shelves. Come on! They have a shit ton of 50 cal for Dreamwalker! Do you know how hard it is to find this ammo for this fucking gun? Damn it, Shadow, keep it down. Fine. Get what we need, but that's all. After this, we should seal the room up so no pony else can get in. I giggled. All right. But don't complain to me later if we suddenly run out of caps and we could have sold all these weapons. I moved around the room and started collecting as much ammo I could for Dreamwalker, the revolver from Mr. Little Tower, the plasma rifle, and whatever else I thought I could use or my friends could use. As I worked, Stardust moved over to the sniper rifles and pulled one down. Shadow, make sure to grab me some ammo for this. And when you're finished with that, grab as much of the C4 as you can, and a detonator. Way ahead of you. Good. That should be all we need. He said. I looked over at a rack of shotguns laid out on the far wall, and one caught my eye. It had a drum-feed magazine, glowing sights, and a beautiful black and red finish on it. Running over to it, I took hold of it with my magic, bringing it closer. I don't care what you say. I'm taking this, too. Give me a funny look. Why? What good is a shotgun right now? Trust me, it'll be useful. 
We'll be in close quarters more often than not, and this baby will be able to take out more enemies than Dreamwalker could with one shot. Also, it's fucking gorgeous, I said, hugging it to me. He walked over, taking a look over it. Hmm, a 10 gauge with a drum feed mag, and it has an extra padding to take some of the recoil off your shoulder. It's a good gun for a Pegasus or Earth pony, but it may have more kick than you are used to, since you always use your magic to fire weapons. Though you handle Dreamwalker well, so it might not be as bad as it would for most unicorns. I grinned. I'll be fine, but I'm not sure that you should only be using a sniper rifle. I know it's your favorite weapon, but it's not ideal for this kind of situation. He cocked his head towards me. That's true. I was going to get an automatic rifle as well, even though they're totally bullet wasters most of the time. When did you start thinking tactically? He had a point. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm finally learning something from my mistakes. He smirked. Or maybe you're just smarter than you give yourself credit for. Now don't stroke my ego that much. I'm an idiot. I said, walking past him and looking over the few automatic rifles. Sardis joined me, taking an interest in one. No, I'm being serious. You're not stupid, not even close. You're impulsive, there's no question there. But when you take a minute to stop and think, you come up with some pretty good ideas. You got that from observing your weapon of choice? I asked. No, I got it from your actions over the last few days. I might have been out of my mind, but I still knew you had a knack for making a good plan, even if that plan was destructive and murderous. He said as he pulled a mid-sized rifle off the wall. You mean when I went to Mill City Tower? I don't see how I did anything smart with that. It was all luck. He gave me a look. It wasn't all luck, Shadow. You were able to worm your way past the guards at street level. You broke into a well-guarded tower, found a way up to the upper floors, killed a head scientist and disguised yourself as her, fooled the guards, and you were able to kill the High Counselor. You did that on your own. You might have come up with a plan on the fly, but you still made the best out of a half-assed plan. If Nightshade didn't know it was you, you might have been able to kill him, or me too. I frowned. And I managed to fuck it up in the end by destroying the tower. That's where your impulsive nature and your anger took over. It's a weakness, and a bad one. However, it's one that you can overcome if you work hard enough at it. My point is that even as pride, I noticed how quickly you were adapting to the new situation. It makes you a force to be reckoned with. He said, as another, with another wide grin. I smiled back and was about to say something when the door to the room opened and a Mary yelled, Freeze! Stardust and I both turned at the same time. His new rifle coming up, as well as my shotgun, and Dreamwalker did the same. Both pointed right at the power-armored mare. I grinned wildly. Only one of you? Stardust didn't grin. He moved over and put himself behind the general, who was still knocked out, lying on the ground. He moved his rifle down and pointed at her head. Make any sudden moves, and I'll repaint the walls red. The mare in power armor froze, looking between myself and Stardust. Let her go. If you do, we'll only take you into custody. I couldn't help but laugh a little. You think we're scared? You're only one mare. How are you going to stop us? She's one of the instructors here. She's as good a fighter as Doorstop. Don't underestimate her, Stardust said his rifle still pressing against the general's head. The mare snickered a bit. Clever one, aren't you? It'll take more than you and this puny unicorn to stop me. And that may be true, but you can't restrain both of us before one of us kills the general. Also, you shouldn't underestimate this unicorn. She's scarier than I am on a good day. You have no idea who you're messing with, he retorted. She started to laugh. What? You think I'm scared of a pony like her? What is she called again? The Courier. Even down here, we've gotten reports about the Pegasi up top about her. If you ask me, it's just a bunch of hearsay. Now let go of the General, and come with me peacefully. Not gonna happen. He said, looking over at me. Shadow, how about you show her what she can do? The instructor laughed. I'm in power armor. What can a unicorn do to a pony like me? I grinned widely and teleported. 
I reappeared just to her left, lifting my new shotgun. She reacted quicker than I thought she would have. She jumped out of the way as I fired. The shotgun was powerful. It was almost too much for me to keep hold of with my magic. The instructor flipped around in midair and dove at me. The magical rifles on her battle saddle glowing as she started to fire down at me. I dodged to one side, then let both my guns fall to the floor. As I shot, a focused blast of energy at her. She wasn't able to dodge it, and caught her in the side, throwing her back against a pile of pistols. She jumped back to her hooves, quickly yelling, You're a fucking fool! You can't hurt me with your magic when I'm in this power armor! She stopped yelling when she saw I was an inch away from her. Dreamwalker pressed against her visor. Maybe not, but I'm sure this will work a lot better than a spell. She didn't move. I'm not scared of you or any of your friends. We're the Enclave. No ponies stronger than us. Stardust, is she important? I asked, ignoring the Pegasus. Nope. She turned her head towards Stardust. You're nothing more than a failed experiment, cadet. You were so close to being the best, but you just had to go and run away. You're wrong about him. The best thing he ever did was escape. You're the fool here, not him. I said, pulling back the trigger. Now, tell me where the rest of my friends are, and how many Enclave Pegasi are in the stable. I'm not telling you a damn thing. I moved Dreamwalker down and shot her through her left foreleg. She crumbled and screamed. I pulled back on the hammer again. Want to try that again? I can do this all day. Or at least until you eventually bleed out from all the bullet wounds you'll potentially get. She looked up at me. How are you able to do that? Easy. This gun's 50 caliber. It packs a huge punch. At a distance, it might not work against power armor. But at close range like this, it'll rip right through it, like it's nothing more than tinfoil. Now, answer my question and I'll let you live. She took a moment, looking between the two of us, as her hoof shook violently from the trauma it just took. Thirty Pegasi flew in. They're trying to round up the cadets in the atrium. The Enclave's preparing them for an assault on the rest of you intruders. We know that more of you made it in here. What about the rest of the instructors and guards in the stable? I asked. They're all guarding the main level. Are you happy now? She scoffed. Yep. Now, what should we do with you? I said, lowering Dreamwalker and looking towards Stardust. Should we... Tie her up, or something creative? As I looked over at him, I saw his eyes go wide right as I heard the mare start to move. I jumped back, avoiding the kick she'd aimed to my head. Her hoof missed, only an inch or so. She lunged at me again, ignoring the pain in her foreleg, as she tried one more desperate and pathetic attack. I didn't give her the chance. Dreamwalker came up, and I fired around into her chest. The bullet blew past the armor and buried itself deep. She fell again gasping in pain. How did you... No. She started to say, and then she started to scream. I saw why a second later. Black light poured out of the hole and Dreamwalker made in her chest, and gave a purplish look to her blood as it flowed. I jumped back, just in time, as her chest exploded outward, ripping her armor apart and blasting blood, bone, and bits of shrapnel, and most of her insides all over the place. The worst part was she didn't die right away. She laid there for a few seconds, with her jaw open and a silent scream, one hoof reaching for me as she did. Then the hoof fell as she finally died. That thing scares me sometimes, you know, Stardust said as he holstered his rifle. True, but it is very effective, I said, holstering Dreamwalker and my new shotgun as I made my way back to Stardust. Well, now that that's over with, how about we go take care of this memory machine so we can get the fuck out of here? Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. Let's go, he replied. I gave him the C4 and detonator, then moved over and picked the general up with my magic again as we made our way out of the room. Once we were out, I looked at the terminal. Guess we should seal the door then? Yeah, cutting off their access to weapons in here will help us out a lot. I hooked the Mark II in the terminal, and after shutting the door, I sealed it for good, making it so only my pit buck could unseal it again. Done. Good. Now let's hurry. I don't know how long we have. Since every pony was pretty much downstairs, getting back to the re-education chamber was pretty easy. 
I was guarding the door at Stardust, attached the C4 to the machine. You almost done in there? I asked, starting to get a little bored and paranoid at the same time. Yeah, just give me another minute. I'm trying to calibrate this detonator to the trigger for the explosives. Otherwise, it won't blow up. Well, hurry it up. Standing here waiting for some pony to attack is making me really anxious. Sneaking around is easy, and so is open battle. But when a pony could show up any moment and try to kill me, that actually kind of freaks me out. And... Done! He said, ignoring my comment. Now all we gotta do is press this button from a safe distance, and we can check this off our to-do list. Only he can make a comment like that at a time like this. Even worse is that in the middle of a stable invasion, slash insurrection, or rebellion, or whatever it's called, I have to go to the bathroom. Why can't this be like a book where the characters don't take any time wasting breaks to save a day? Come to think of it, why doesn't any pony in books ever say they have to use the bathroom? Kinda takes away the realism. Okay, cool. Let's get the fuck out of here and get this shit over with. We proceeded to the opposite direction, out the doors from medical, and walked towards the stairway. On the way, I remembered that there were staff restrooms down the hallway, and took a bit of a hero's detour as Stardust stood outside the doorway, awkwardly holding the general with a pistol pressed against her head. I guessed him waiting for me was a bit of payback for earlier in medical when I had to wait for him to place the bomb. As we got closer to the stairwell, I could hear the sound of gunfire from behind the security door at the top of the stairs. When we got the doors open, I saw it brought me back to Stable 28 when I came into the Hall of Gore. Stardust looked a little sickened by all the blood spraying on the walls, floor, and ceiling. Who the fuck did this? The Enclave can't really be killing the inhabitants. It's a waste of resources. I know who did it. I said flatly. Okay, mind explaining? He asked. It's pride, I answered. Stardust shook his head. No, you fixed my head. You didn't split me into two different people. Not you. Forty Kalos, I said as he... before we could argue the point further. Let's just say that since I quote-unquote killed him, he's been living in my shadow. Turns out he's my monstrous brother and the one who almost killed me by accident when I was a fold. He was what? Stardust exclaimed, ignoring the delicate situation. Why didn't you say something to get rid of him? I don't know. Maybe because he realized who I was and helped me when Orta was shot by quickly getting me back to the kingdom with her. He was also there when I was liberating my own stable from Wildfire, my old overmare. And Short sort of did the same thing here. For some reason or another, he's decided to help me, even after all. I told him I didn't want his help. I explained. Sure, he might be helping you, but I hope that help extends to friends. Think about it. If he's just helping you, we might be in danger. Me, Doorstop, Wind Thrasher, Dr. Limbus, the other cadets, he said in a panic. I sighed. That's a chance we're gonna have to take. And what about Solstice? Yeah, her too, I guess. I don't trust her, by the way. She could just be plotting against us as an undercover operative. Or worse, she could be envy in disguise, Stardust said. I took a second to think about it. She was being sort of weird, but that could just be the way she is. But she was being a little hostile towards me the whole way here. If she really was Envy, wouldn't she have attacked me and my friends by now? Now that I think about it, she's with the others, and if she really is Envy, she could do something to them. If she was Envy in disguise, I think we would have known by now. Envy wouldn't take the form of some pony I don't like and try to get close to me that way. He'd pick some pony I love. Ugh. I can't think about stuff like this right now. We need to get down there and make sure Ori Callus is tearing up the right ponies. We still don't know if he's actually helping us or not. Maybe we'll be killing our friends down there while we're up here chattering away like high school fillies with too much time on our hooves. I proceeded down the stairs and peeked around the bloody corner to see a shadow was by on the wall. I continued down the second set of stairs as I got closer to the bottom. The air started to smell like metal from all the blood. It reminded me of when we were in Stable 9 and discovered the horrible display of pony heads and hanging foals. 
Before I could make sure everything was clear, Stardust rushed past me around the corner. Come on, Shadow. Hurry up. No, wait, I don't think it's safe, I said as he disappeared into the hallway. I quickly followed him, only to stop at the sight of him in the middle of the hallway. Then I saw the shadow curl up around his legs and already callous materialize in front of him, looking like a pony made of darkness. Well, well, well. It isn't the imposter. I've been looking for you for a long time. No one deserves to be me until I'm dead and gone. Those idiots up in the clouds shouldn't have assumed I'd be killed so easily by Shadow and replaced me with a wretch like you. Orikalos! He's not brainwashed anymore! I shouted from behind Stardust. They both came to notice me standing there. Shadow, wouldn't he know that you did this, that since he's been playing stowaway in your shadow? Stardust asked. I don't know. He's split away from me before. I replied. I know he's not on their side anymore. I just don't care. He now holds my title, and I don't want him to. So I need to kill him, and finish what I started when you and your friends came into this place. Orikala said as he wrapped a shadow around Stardust's throat. Before I could say anything, Stardust managed to speak. I renounced that title when I came out of the machine, and took the general hostage. Yeah, the Enclave won't want anything to do with him once they know it was him who freed this place and destroyed that stupid machine. Actually, they'll most likely want to kill him for something like this, even though he's part of the stupid program I keep hearing about nonstop. I said, moving closer to the shadowy form of my uncle. His purple glowing eyes fell upon me. You know, this Pegasus is a danger to you and any pony he runs into. What's stopping the Enclave from recapturing him and making him do a mockery of my title and the team I created? I won't let that happen. Last time, it took an attack from what was left of the Sins to capture him. With you no longer pride and your team disbanded, what else could they do to capture him again? The Enclave has more tricks up its sleeve. And they're strong enough to capture him. He almost killed you and your friends. I vowed to protect you, and I'm doing that right now. He said as he started to tighten his hold on Stardust. Hurry, Kalos, put him down right now! I yelled. Yeah, what she said! Stardust managed to squeak out. For a long moment, Hurry, Kalos just looked me in the eye, then finally sighed and dropped Stardust. Fine, but I hope you don't end up regretting your decision. Stardust coughed. <laughs> Why are you such a dick? The shadowy form looked over at him. I'm not a dick. I'm protective of my family. I don't trust you, Stardust. And neither should she. Fuck you. I was brainwashed. No, you had your memories removed and fake ones implanted. With lies like those, your hatred was justified. The problem I have is when did you didn't remember who you were? Small bits of memory came through and you ignored them. Trusting what you thought you knew about her was a lie, even when evidence proved otherwise. The thing you did to try and kill her, the ways you threatened her and her friends, the way you tried to kill the Griffin, all of that was because you let your hatred Control your actions. Deep down, you're just as dark as I am. And she is. Stardust cocked his head to one side, looking at Orikalos like he was a strange-looking bug. Dude, that's harsh. At least I'm not a creepy evil shadow like you. Orikalos sighed. You're also an idiot. Now you're just being a dick again. Stardust said with a goofy grin, I'll never want to see vanish again. I couldn't help but laugh a little. Orikalos, I don't care if you trust him or not. I do, and that should be enough for you. Now, do you mind explaining to me why you decided to leave my shadow and kill all these ponies? Especially after I told you to go away. Ugh. I, uh, didn't think you meant that. He said, sounding sheepishly. Orikalos sounded sheepish had to be the strangest thing I've ever heard. 
forcing my side. At the time, I did, but I've gotten over it. Though, if you have to tag along, then why don't you... I don't want you doing things like this without telling me. It's... messy. I'm your uncle. Listening to you is disrespectable to my role as an uncle. I should be the one telling you what to do. You will if you want to stay with me, I said. And how do you plan on keeping me from following you or staying in your shadow? Oh, I'm sure I can find a way to get rid of you, myself. I know a couple of hunters that probably know a way to stop a shadow creature like you from tagging along. Also, I'm pretty sure you're still not up to full strength yet. So, I'm not sure you can do much to stop me from getting rid of you. You also owe me for the bullshit you put me through with the dark curse and for trying to kill me. So either you do as I say, or you go away. It's your choice. I said with a cocky grin. He chuckled a little. Fine, you make a fair point. It's not a good point, but it's enough to convince me. I'll do as you ask, for now. But I won't be stopped from saving you. Your safety comes first. Stardust shook his head. She's not a child, she can take care of herself. She is a child. No matter what she thinks. She doesn't know as much as I do about how things work in the wasteland. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, I'm young, big deal. We don't have time for this. Stardust, I think we're far enough away from the memory machine, so blow the damn thing up! Callus, get back in my shadow. If I need your help, I'll ask. Stardust pulled out the detonator. I guess you're right. He pushed the button, and a rumble filled the stable for a moment, followed by a distant boom. Well, that takes care of that. Callus sighed and melted back into my shadows again, moving with me. I can't hold on to my form for much longer anyway. Just remember, Shadow, I'm here if you need me. Still taking orders from my niece leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Stardust looked over at me and grinned. At least he's not trying to kill you. Yeah, I guess that's true. Now that we have that settled, we should try and finish this? Yeah, good idea. Though, I hope your uncle didn't kill any of the stable inhabitants. It's hard to tell with how mutilated the bodies are. I looked around at the torn apart bodies. Some of them had been wearing stable barding. It looks like at least two lived here. Oricalus's voice echoed out from my shadow. Most of them were stable guards who were making their way up to the upper levels to kill you both. Two were older cadets who joined up with them. Stardust looked down at my shadow. Keep quiet. You still killed ponies I'm trying to save. You can't save every pony here, Oricalus said back to Stardust. Enough bickering, you two. You're like an old married couple, I swear. Anyway, what I want to know is why the Enclave's here at all. I thought Nightshade wanted to shut this place down. If he's really on the new High Council, Pony, why would he let his soldiers come in here and try to kill us? I asked as we started walking down the hall, slowly, doing our best to avoid the gore around us. Who knows? Maybe he hasn't taken full control yet, Stardust said. Remember him saying that even with the others gone, he'd still have to take control of the other council ponies? Who wouldn't want to see him in charge? Or this is another pony who's trying to go against Nightshade and keep his place going, I said as we came closer to one of the windows that overlooked the atrium. I gasped as I looked down. The cadets were all lined up along the side of the atrium, standing at attention. Four older ponies standing next to them, who must have been the instructors. Lined up on the other side were thirty pegasi, most of them in power armor and one stallion who was in what looked like an officer's uniform. That stallion was walking up and down the lines of cadets, saying something to them. Stardust came next to me, saying, That doesn't look good. Yeah, I know. How the hell are we supposed to stop them all? We shouldn't have made the others leave. We could use their help. Stardust said. None, unless you can think of a way to stop 30 power-armored pegasi from attacking us. I looked through my inventory and my pit buck, trying to think of something that I could use to help us. That's when I noticed something. I had ten spike grenades. I remembered the fight back in Frosty Summit when Wingnut used a spark grenade to stop Solstice in her tracks. 
You said something about the spark grenade shutting down the power armor's bell matrices. Without it running, the armor wouldn't be able to run, and the pony inside was stuck. Hey, Stardust. Do you think we'd be able to get close enough to them to use these spark grenades? I asked as I pulled them out of my saddlebags. He beamed. Shadow, you're a fucking genius. I wouldn't say genius. I just thought to myself, what would Wingnut do? He looked down at the Enclave soldiers. It's a lot of soldiers. You have to be very careful about dealing with them. The problem with the atrium is that there's only one way in and out, so we wouldn't be able to just sneak in without being noticed. There's no way we'd have be able to get close enough to them to use the spark grenades. What if we lure them out? I asked. How? Well, it depends on how fast of a flyer you are in this stable, I said with a maniacal grin. He looked at me quizzically. What's rolling around to that head of yours? Oh, you'll see. Follow me. I'll explain as we walk. Ten minutes later, the plan was set. Stardust was working his way down the stairs that led to the atrium as I waited at the top. It was all about the timing. Thankfully, Stardust and I have worked together enough that I understood him and how he worked. It shouldn't be too hard to pull off. Right. Finally, I heard Stardust yell from the bottom of the steps, Yo, Enclave fucktards! I thought you were looking for me! If so, then why are y'all sitting down here acting like a bunch of mares on a girl's night out? I heard a harsh voice yell, Capture him! Now! <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna just go here quietly? You gotta work for it. Catch me if you can, losers! Stardust yelled as he started to run back up the stairs. You ten, go after him. The rest stay back here with me and watch the stable dwellers. The stallion said. Stardust flew past me, saying, Better hurry, they'll be right on my tail. I could already hear the pegasi working their way up the stairs. I worked my way back down the hall, opening the door to the female locker rooms. I just got through the door when the pegasi made it up the stairs. I ducked behind the wall to the other side of the door, and I heard Stardust yell from down the hall. Come on! Don't tell me you sent the slowest ponies in the unit. I'm a little bit insulted. Shouts rang out from the pegasi who were pursuing Stardust. I heard them all yelling insults at him as they passed by the open door where I was hiding. I grinned as the last one flew by. Stepping back into the hall, I pulled a pin from three of the spark grenades, yelling, First rule of soldier school. I always keep an eye out for the quiet one. The grenades tinged off the metallic floor for a moment before the rearmost pegasus turned to see my smug grin. One of them saw what I'd threw and managed to get out and, Ah, oh, fuck! Right before they went off. A blast of magical energy went off around the ten pegasi. A moment later, they all stood there in dead power armor. One of them cursing, saying, That's a dirty trick! Stardust came flying back towards me, smiling down at them as he flew over. No such thing as a dirty trick in battle. You're just lucky we didn't use something worse. What do we do with him now? I asked as Stardust landed next to me. He shrugged. There's only 20 left down in the atrium. If we could get the cadets to fight back, we'd have no promise, problem finishing them off. Fucking savages, the stallion said to my left. I rolled my eyes as I walked closer to them all. Yeah, yeah, I know. All of us wastelanders are nothing but stupid dirt ponies. You think that only ponies born in the Enclave are worth anything? The rest of the ponies in Equestria can all die, am I right? Damn right. The Enclave is perfect. We are the ones who will bring Equestria back to the right path, he said. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. You keep on believing those lies. I looked around at the other nine ponies. Any pony here from the Crystal Empire? The stallion who spoke before tried to spit on me, but missed. That's none of your business. Yeah, I wasn't asking you, I said, walking past them. A mare in black spoke for a moment. I am. Why do you care? How do you even know about it? I thought almost no pony in the wasteland of the Crimp Crystal Empire was still around. I moved closer to her. I asked because I'm from the Crystal Empire. My father was an Enclave soldier. 
My mother worked as a medic and researcher in Nimbus. My uncle is the pony that used to be Pride. Stardust here was stolen from his parents and was born from Stratus. We're both born in the Enclave, just like all of you are. The problem with a power armor is that you can't see a pony's face when you surprise them, but at least you can hear it in their voice. The mare stammered for a moment. You... you mean you're one of us? Then why are you attacking the stable then? Easy. I came here to save my friend. This place is abomination that shouldn't have ever been created. I may have been born in the Enclave, but I'm nothing like the rest of you sheep. I do what I think is right. I don't just take orders from higher-ups who think they know what's better than me. Let me ask you, do you really want to be down here? All of them were silent for a long time. Finally, the mayor spoke up. No, but we don't have a choice. The captain said we have to come down to stop the courier from destroying a friendly stable, just like you did to New Pegasus. I came here to save my friend. I also plan on helping those ponies in the atrium get free. They've been lied to their entire lives about who they are and the outside world. All of that for a stupid program started by a few scientists so they can make super soldiers. It's sick and wrong, and I'm not going to let ponies like you stop me. I said, turning back towards the stairs. So I take it we aren't going to kill them, right? Stardust said as we walked past. Nope, they are no longer a threat. There are still a lot of ponies down there. What do you plan on doing about them? I smiled as a thought came to my head. Hey Stardust, does this stable's PA system work on a wireless broadcast? I think so. I know the General could use it from her pit buck whenever she wanted to. I moved over to the General, who was still knocked out, and pulled her foreleg up and started to mess with her pit buck, until I found the broadcast for the stable. Stardust, I want you to do whatever you can to get the cadets on our side. He walked over to me, asking, And what are you going to do? Make a distraction, I said as I started heading down the stairs towards the atrium. I heard Stardust chuckle a little to himself, catching him saying, My pleasure, as I continued on. When I got to the door, I pulled out three more spark grenades, took a deep breath, and opened the door. I was met with twenty power-armed pegasi turning and pointing their energy rifles at me. The tall stallion, who I saw earlier taking all the cadets, was glaring at me. The inhabitants of Stable 97, however, were looking at me like I was the strangest thing they had ever seen. The stallion said, Hold your fire. I think we're in the company of the infamous Courier. I still hated that name when Pony said it the way he did. Of course. I can't do anything to fix it now. I'll just roll with it. I grinned and smugly took a little bow. You'd be correct, Enclave Pig. He looked down his nose at me like I was a stain. I have a name, you backwater mare. I am Captain Plank. Now, tell us where the runaway is. I started to laugh. Captain Plank? Really? Your parents named you Plank? What's your mother's name? Fallen Tree? I bet your dad's called Buzzsaw. I mean, come on! Who names their full Plank? I saw anger flash in his eyes. I chose my name! Really? You chose that name? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm picturing you looking in a mirror saying, You know what would be a real kick-ass name? Plank. <laughs> like, why would you choose something like Captain Plank? I think the only one stupid than that would be, like, Pegleg or Taserface. Shut your fucking... He started to yell. I was watching the other ponies as he yelled, waiting for the right moment. Most of them turned their faces towards their captain, and that's when I decided to strike. I threw the spark grenades in the middle of the group. Pegasi then teleported to the other side of the atrium, pulling out Dreamwalker and my plasma rifle. The blast took out 13 of the power-armored Pegasi's power armor. The rest were still trying to figure out where I went. I opened fire on the first, yelling, Hey, Plank! Heads up! The moron turned right at me as the blast of plasma slammed into his face, melting it and the rest of him. Right as I started my attack, Stardust's voice echoed throughout the atrium. <clears> hmm. <throat> Hello, ponies of Stable 97. This is your old pal Stardust. Yeah, I'm pretty sure y'all been told that I either died when Hailstorm died, or that I was escalated to the upper level. Well, I'm here to tell y'all that that was a lie. 
This whole place is a lie, my friends. The rest of the Enclave soldiers started to fire at me, but I teleported again, reappearing behind them. Come on, you can do better than that. The Plasma Rifle and Dreamwalker filed simultaneously, taking down two Pegasi at once. I ducked and rolled to the side as another took a shot at me. As I continued to fight, Stardust continued to give his speech. Cadets, your entire life in the stable has been a lie. The outside world is in death like they told us. I've lived out there for seven months now. I've seen what Equestria has become. I've met ponies that do their best to get by every day and survive. I've met good ponies and bad. The world outside isn't perfect, but it's better than living in a place where all they do is lie to us. The Enclave is trying to turn you all into mindless soldiers to use in a war they want to start against the other Pegasi cities. They took us away from our parents when we were foals. They told our parents that we died so they could take us away and make us into tools. Cadets of Stable 97, stop listening to their lies and rise up. Use the skills they taught you here to put an end to the Enclave's programs and this stable of misery. Our friend Hailstorm died so that I could escape and find help so you could all be free. Don't let his sacrifice be in vain. I switched Dream Rocker out for the revolver, let my barding take a hit from one of the stallions who was charging me, and pressed the barrel of the revolver to his muzzle. I grinned and pulled the trigger. As blood flew over me, I let his body fall against my own, using it as a shield for two more pegasi blasting multiple shots of crimson death towards me. I took that moment to catch my breath. Then wrapped the dead stallion's body in my magic and threw him at the two firing at me. At this point, Stardust stopped talking over the PA. I looked over the cadets who were watching the fight in awe. The instructors on the other hoof looked pissed. Two of them were trying to yell something at the cadets as the other two looked ready to jump in and help the last four remaining soldiers. Two of them were trying to get out from under the dead stallion. The other two were slowly circling around myself and the rest of the pegasi who were frozen in their armor. I made sure to keep my eye on them as I spoke to the other two that were stuck. I'd stay down if I were you. One of the trapped stallions responded. Fuck you. We don't listen to dirt ponies. I pulled out one of my last spark grenades and held it in my magical grip. No. I mean, you should stay down or I'll make you stay down. A mare who was circling around me slowly said, Try anything and we'll turn you into dust. Really now. And what makes you think you'll have any better luck than your friends did? Because so far, to me, it looks like none of you have been able to land a solid hit on me. Now stand down before things get worse. Ten of your pals are locked in their power armor upstairs. More are trapped down here. I've killed three of you already, and your commander. I said as I slowly started to pull out the pin. We have orders to bring you in alive. That's the only reason you're still standing, courier. The mayor responded. Oh. Really? Well... That makes this ten times easier, then. I twisted around, throwing the grenade at the two who were above me and the cadets. They both tried to jump back, but the air attack was a feint. Still holding on to the spark grenade with my magic, I looped it around them. Flew back towards me and passed my head, landing right at the hooves of the two power-armored instructors who were trying to sneak up on me from behind. Both swore as the grenade went off. I grinned at the four Enclave soldiers as the mayor yelled, Fuck this! I don't care what our orders were. I'm killing her. A loud shout, shot rang out from the other side of the atrium as a bullet flew through the mayor's visor. Her body dropped from the air and made a sound like a thud on the atrium's floor and started convulsing. The stallion who had been above me and the cadets watched her drop. What the hell? Another shot rang out and he dropped. Most of his muzzle was torn off by the bullet. I turned and looked back at Stardust who was standing in the doorway to the stairs his rifle at the ready. The general had passed out, lying on his back. What took you so long, Dusty? The general started to wake up. I needed to knock her out again, he said as he slowly walked in, looking who was left. The two stallions were able to get free from under the dead stallion, but they didn't move an inch. The other instructors were left glaring over at him, not being able to move. The cadets looked shocked as they saw my friend slowly walking in. If I were you two, I'd stay down. You're not going to win this fight, I said to the last two Enclave soldiers. They both looked at each other, and then at the dead ponies around them and the ones who were still trapped in their power armor. Finally, one said, Yeah, fuck this. I don't feel like dying today. Same here.
the other replied. Stardust lowered his rifle and slowly walked towards the instructors. You're the only ones left. The guards here are either dead or fled, the generals beat, and nothing's left in here that can save you. I think it's about time you told the cadets what this place is really for. Don't listen to him, cadets. He's nothing more than a runaway. He betrayed you all, one of them said. She was a short mare, and the only one not in power armor. One of the mares, standing in the line, walked forward and said in a stern tone, You told us that Stardust was killed by the stable door when he was trying to leave. You said he killed Hailstorm and tried to run. If that's true, then why is he here now? Cadet Shortcake, keep your muzzle shut, the short instructor yelled. Stardust looked at his rifle. Stop your fucking lies! I took a moment to look over at the mare. I could see why Stardust had a crush on her. She had a very light magenta coat, a mixed white, yellow, and red mane that swirled together like frosting, with red freckles on her nose and a striking blue eyes. She looked close to my age, but was taller than me, not hard to do, and her cutie mark was a shortcake with whipped cream on top. As I looked over at her, Shortcake took another step out of line. No, I want answers. We all do. The only other instructor was, wasn't frozen in his power armor spoke. Sandalwood, I think we should tell them. We can't keep this up anymore. We lost. It's over. If we do, we'll be betraying our oaths, the short mare said. I really don't want to kill any more of the ponies I grew up with here, Instructor Sandalwood. Instructor Tome is right. This is over. Either you tell them the truth, or I'll blow your head off and I'll tell them myself. Stardust said. The instructor looked around the room. Then at Stardust and sighed. Stardust, I'll admit, you were an amazing soldier, able to do all this. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. This is what we were making you into such a good soldier for. It has nothing to do with how I was trained. If I only used what I learned here, I wouldn't have made it this far. You see, there's one big flaw in the way you trained me and the rest of us here. We never learned what it means to work with a team, to take what strength they have and add it to your own. You never taught us to work with friends. You always taught us what we had to do to become the strongest. I learned that in the Wasteland, that no pony is the strongest. I'm a great sniper and decent at hoof to hoof. One of the friends I made out there, Shadow, She's small, but she can think on her hooves when the time calls for it. She's also a natural with close-range weapons, which is helpful for a pony like me. Our friend, Aura, who's a griffin, is one of the biggest and best fighters with melee weapons I've ever seen, and she's fast. We even have a colt that travels with us that's so smart he can find ways around things that no other pony would even think of. Together we make a good team. It's because of my friends that we're able to do this. Stardust said as he walked closer to the cadets and the instructors. Instructor Sandalwood looked around again and sighed. I can see you're right. Then she looked over at Shortcake and the other cadets. Stable 97 is one big lie, just like Stardust said. Over 20 years ago, a mare by the name of Dr. Stormy came up with what's called the Devil's Children Program. The original idea was for two cloud cities, called Stratus and Nimbus, to send young foals to be raised in a military environment and be trained into super soldiers. One of the best of those children were ready and fully trained. We'd clone them so we could make an army and take over the entire enclave. The first generation was the start of the program, and from all the foals we took, Stardust and four others stood out as perfect trainees. The program was expanded and we brought in your group as foals and worked from there. The stable was a perfect location for the program to work. So the Enclave invaded the stable, killed most of the ponies that lived here, and remodeled the stable to fit our needs. They all looked shocked as the instructor spoke. Stardust, however, lowered his rifle and said, It gets worse. They never planned on keeping us alive once they started the cloning program. They needed soldiers who would take orders, no questions asked. Shortcake looked over at Stardust and asked, But... What if one of us found out what was going on? They had a plan for that as well. On the upper level, in medical, there was a machine that can wipe your memories and even replace them. That machine was used on me a few weeks back to turn me into a monster they had control of, and could send me after my friend Shadow as a test run. She stopped me, brought me back here to fix it, he said. 
One of the female cadets fell to the ground, saying quietly, But what about our parents? They said we'd get to see them once we finished training. Instructor Tome said, Your parents aren't in the stable. They don't even know you're alive. A couple of them started to tear up when he said this, so I stepped in. There's a town south of the stable, called the Kingdom. The Empress there wanted me to try and get you all to go there when you're free from this place. She wants to help you find your families again. Shortcake looked over at me like I was something disgusting. No pony asked you, outsider. I glared over at her. My jaw dropped. I thought to myself, are you kidding me? Did she not see what I had just done to the Enclave soldiers around us? I was about to say something, but Stardust spoke before I could. Shortcake. Shadow's my friend and the leader of our group. You should show her some respect. Shortcake looked over at Stardust. Dusty, you mean that you, the top fighter of our stable, followed around a short unicorn? She's a good mare and stronger than she looks. Trust me. Shortcake rolled her eyes. And why should we trust her? That this Empress Pony... Zebra. Empress Sheena is a zebra. I interrupted. All the cadets looked at me now like I was something nasty. Shortcake saying, You want us to go get help from a... Zebra? Are you fucking insane? A little, but I'm working on it, and yes I do. She's a good mare, and she wants to help ponies like you. That's what she does. Dusty, you can't be serious. Why would any pony work with a zebra? One of the cadets said. Well, I don't know her myself. But if Shadow says she's a good mare, then she is. I've learned that not every zebra or griffin out there is evil. They just wanted us to believe it. I chuckled a little. Yeah, even Doorstop doesn't mind her. He's the one who first agreed with Sheena's plan. Most of the cadets said at once, Doorstop's alive? The instructors looked a little ashamed, but Sandalwood said, He didn't die like in the report. He helped Stardust escape. When the Enclave found out, they banished him. I was starting to worry this wasn't going to end well. The cadets didn't look happy. I mean, they just had their entire lives turned around, but still, why would they look so angry? At me. Shortcake walked closer to me and got right in my face. Tell me, Shadow, why should we trust you? Because I'm telling the truth? Sheena's a good mare, and she wants to help. So do I. And why would some random zebra want to help Pony she doesn't even know? I sighed. I literally just told you that's who she is. Are your ears filled with hay or something? She had a hard childhood, and doesn't like to see any Pony, Griffin, or Zebra suffer. She wants to help any Pony she can. I know this is a lot to take in, but you have to trust us, Stardust said. He's right, the booming voice of Doorstop said from the door. Little runts telling you the truth. Every pony turned to look at the big stallion. I face hoofed. Doorstop, I thought you were going to stay outside. Y'all were taking too damn long. I figured you needed my help. Also, ten more Pegasi from Nimbus showed up. Another stallion showed up beside Doorstop. He was an older stallion with a faded green coat and a light gray mane. He was wearing some kind of uniform with lots of medals on the jacket. As soon as we saw him, Stardust and I both had our weapons up ready to fire. Fuck. You mean we had more of the assholes to fight? I said. Put that away before you hurt more ponies, runt. Doorstop said. This is Major Voss. He's not here to fight. He's Enclave. I said, not lowering my weapon. The older pony cleared his throat, then said. <clears throat> yes, I am courier. But this Dashite is right. Pardon, I mean, doorstop. I'm here on behalf of High Council Pony Nightshade. He declared yesterday that the Devil's Children program was to be stopped at once, and the inhabitants freed. This time I did lower my guns. Wait a sec. What now? I thought Nightshade sent the others here to stop me. Major Voss looked and shook his head. Not at all, Carrier. The ponies here were just following orders from Captain Plank, which, from the looks of it, you had already taken care of him. We're here to help the ponies here reintegrate back into the Enclave. 
The Nightshade also said that you are no longer an enemy of the Grand Pegasus Enclave, at least for Stratus and Nimbus. Any crime that the former High Council ponies charged you with have been dropped, as long as you don't interfere with our business again in the future. The General woke up and jumped to her hooves, looking around. What's going on? Major Vaz looked at her. Ah, so you are still alive. She looked at the older Pegasus. Voss, what are you doing in here? That's Major Voss to you, Overmare. She's a general, not an Overmare? Shortkick said, still looking shocked at everything that was going on. The stallion laughed. General? She's not even in the military. She's a scary mare that we knew would keep the ponies in line here. Tardis chuckled. I always thought she was a little weak for her rank. You shut your muzzle, Stardust! The general yelled. But she was quickly cut off by Major Voss. Thunderclap, you will be coming with me to report to Nightshade about everything that's been happening with this stable. Failure to do so will lead to banishment or death. The mayor looked like he'd just kicked her. She looked down at her hooves and quietly said, Understood. Now then, <clears throat> I believe that's all settled. I think you can leave. We will take it from here, Major Voss said. No can do, Major Voss, Doorstop said, walking over to the cadets. The cadets are coming with us, at least for now. I need to make sure they get used to the wasteland. If they want to leave later and join the Enclave, that'll be on them. Major Voss looked at the old drill sergeant for a long moment, then chuckled. <laughs> Doorstop, the reports we've gotten about you are true. You are a stubborn stallion. Damn right, and so are the cadets I've trained. I'm thankful to Nightshade for doing this, but I ain't giving y'all the cadets. Major Voss laughed again. <laughs> no worries, Doorstop. I'll explain to Nightshade, as long as you tell me where they'll be going. Like Shadow said, I'm taking them to the kingdom. None of us said we were going anywhere, Shortcake said. Thorstop glared at her until she backed away. Y'all don't have a say in this. You can't stay here anymore, and I ain't letting you go with the Enclave. Not till y'all learn more about your new lives. Most of the cadets said, Yes, sir. Not Shortcake. She looked up again, then looked over at me. I'm not going anywhere till she proves herself. Huh? I said, looking at her confused. Why do I need to prove anything? I just saved your asses. Shortcake, you don't get a say in this, Stardust said. Shut up, Dusty. I'm very pissed off to deal with you two. If Shadow thinks she's good enough to lead you and doorstop here, and if she wants us to go to this kingdom ran by some zebra, then she needs to pass our test. If she can win in a fight against me, then we'll go. If not... We'll find our own way, just like Stardust did when he left. You can't be serious, Stardust said. All of us are trained soldiers. Shadow may be able to hold her own, but it's not a fair fight. Doorstop, however, smiled. No, I think it's a great idea. You what? I yelled, looking at Star Doorstop. Shortgig just smiled. If Doorstop thinks it's a good idea, then she must be able to hold her own. Stardust looked worried. No, he's just a crazy old buck. Shut your yap, Stardust, Doorstop said. Put some trust in your old friend. But, I started to say, no buts, Doorstop said, coming closer to me and whispering. Shortcake is the best fighter in her class. You can't hold your own in a fair fight. But you should be able to know that this stable was never taught the cadets how to deal with unicorns. That's a big mistake on their part. From what I've seen, unicorns don't fight fair. I smiled and looked over at Shortcake, and sighed visibly, cursing at myself. Fine. If you want to prove that I'm worth it or whatever, fine. What's the rules? No weapons or armor. First one to submit loses. Sounds good to me. Good. We'll let Major Voss help his ponies 
You two can fight it out on the other end of the atrium, Doorstop said. A few minutes later, I was standing a few feet away from Shortkeek, both of us staring each other down. She stood in what I guess was a proper fighting stance. I mostly did my best to look tough. Marmored Barding and Duster were sitting next to Stardust with my saddlebags. Shortcake was with Doorstop. The rest of the cadets stood in a ring around us. I already had a plan on how I was going to take her down. A blast from my concentrated explosion spell should work nicely, but she wouldn't be expecting it. If I could finish this quickly, it would show them all that I wasn't just some weak unicorn from the outside. Doorstop raised a hoof. Ready? Begin! I started to draw on my magic, but I wasn't fast enough. Shortcake flapped her wings and shot towards me like a rocket. Holy fuck, she's fast. And she slammed into me, put a hoof to my face before I could even think about defending myself. I flew back from the force of the blow, rolling across the ground until I slammed up against one of the cadets. Shortcake wasn't going to give me the time I needed to cast a spell. She was on me so fast that I barely had time to register how I went from standing in the middle of the circle to being on the ground. Three quick jabs slammed to my chest, side, and face, each one more painful than the last. I threw up a hoof to uh, try and block the fourth, then took hold of her hoof and tried to flip her around and off of me. Shortcake used the flip to her own advantage. She flipped around in midair, took hold of my hoof and used the momentum to flip me around and back onto the ground. She twisted around my foreleg, pinning me to the ground with my hoof in some sort of kind of lock. She put more pressure on it, slowly forcing me to scream in pain. It felt like she was ripping my leg off. Blinking away tears and doing best to ignore the pain, I rolled in the same direction she was pulling, forcing her to let my leg go so she wasn't thrown off. She used her rear legs to hold onto me, and brought her forelegs down to slam into the back of my head. Pitiful. How does a weak thing like that end up leading a pony like you, Dusty? Ignoring her taunting, I bucked my hips and threw my head back at the same time. The motion threw her off balance again. She pitched forward, right into the back of my head. I felt something crunch behind me, and blood flowed over my mane and back. I heard a curse as she jumped off me, rolling back onto my hooves, doing my best to keep as much weight off my right foreleg. I was still screaming in pain from the abuse, and my head felt like I just headbutted a brick wall. I jumped back, then looked at Shortcake, who was glaring at me again with blood pouring down her muzzle and shin from, from her nose. The crunching sound I heard must have been from that. You were saying? I asked, giving her my best fuck you smile I could. You'll pay for that, runt! Shortcake said. She dashed forward towards me again. Expecting her to do the same as before, I brought my good foreleg up to defend myself, but Shortcake changed direction quickly. She jumped into the air and flipped over me and brought her rear hooves down on my back. I was slammed into the ground again, my back now feeling like some pony had just shot me. She wasn't finished, though. As soon as I hit the ground, she kicked me into the air. Then, doing another flip, she bucked me the other side of the circle. I screamed again as I landed on my back, pain blotting out my vision for a second. Then I felt a hoof on my neck, pushing down slowly, choking me. You should yield before I crush your windpipe. You stupid bitch, don't you know who I am? I'm the fucking courier. This pain is nothing. I'll never give up. I smiled the best I could as I was able to say, No way. I saw a flash of anger for a second. Then I teleported out from under her and reappeared on the other side again, coughing and hacking as I tried to breathe right. Shortcake looked confused for a moment. Then she saw me. That's cheating! I sighed, and in a raspy voice, I said, your rules didn't say anything about magic, just no weapons. <clears throat> using my magic is no different than using your wings. It's not the same, she started to say, but I teleported again. This time, I reappeared to her left, spun around, and landed a kick in her face. She was slammed to the ground by the force of my kick, her head rebounding off the floor. I followed that up by doing the same thing she did to me and bucked her back towards the center of the circle. She screamed as her face slammed into the ground again. You should know something, Shortcake. I'm not going to give up. You may be a better fighter than me, but you aren't smarter. I can take the pain from your blows. I can handle your insults. You have no idea the shit I've gone through in my life. You can't win. Yeah, I'll show you. She yelled, jumping back to her hooves, then getting into the air so she could rush me again. 
I just smiled and wrapped her in my telekinesis. She looked confused for a moment as she tried to flap her wings so she could keep rushing towards me, but nothing happened. My smile grew as I used my spell to slam her back into the ground. Hard. Don't get up. She didn't listen. And you have no idea what we've gone through every day here. We were trained never to give up, never to back down. You'll have to kill me if you want to win. You say that now, but can you really follow through? I asked as my horn started to glow again. You can bet on it, she said. She dashed to one side, trying for a rush again. She changed direction and dashed the other way, working her way closer to me but making it hard for me to predict where she'd end up. In a fight against an opponent who wasn't a unicorn, it may have worked. But what good is having a few spells up your sleeve if you can't cheat a little? I waited until she went in for a strike, then ducked under her. For a second, she was flying over me as she missed her strike. Her hoof and body changed direction in midair to try for a second attack. That's when I blasted her with my expulsion spell. She let out a louder scream than before as she was blasted up, followed by another as her body slammed into the ceiling of the atrium. She started to fall. I grabbed hold of her with a magic and threw her against the far wall, then lifted her once more as I pulled her close to me. As she came flying towards me, I slammed a hoof against her gut. Her head inched close to me from the impact as I said, Fuck you, softly, and kissed her nose in a very smug way. The wind from her breath was blasted out of her lungs in a sad exhalation of air. Her body slumped over my shoulder. I brought my good foreleg up and twisted her around and put her in a headlock. The same one Wrath had used on me during our last fight. Yield! I yelled as I put her in, put some pressure on her neck. It took a moment for her to answer. She was doing her best to gasp for air. Then she said, N No. I tightened my grip. You're done. Now yield. I don't want to kill you. And you're a poor excuse for a fighter. No, I'm a mayor who's trying to save your sorry ass. I won. You know it. Now act like an adult and admit defeat. For a long moment, we stood there, short kick, gasping for air, me holding her in a chokehold. Finally, she said quietly, If I do, my friends will think I'm weak. If I'm weak, how can I become a good leader? Just as quietly and quickly, I responded, Winning isn't the only thing that makes you a good leader. Trust me, I know. A good leader has to admit when she's defeated, or when she's wrong. You have to show them that... If you really want to be a leader for the rest of the cadets, show them that you're willing to listen to those who know better than you and can show your friends how to do better. The mark of a good leader is a leader who learns so she can set a good example to those she leads. I saw her looking at some of the cadets. I wonder if she saw the same look on their faces as I did. They were scared. Their lives had changed drastically in the past couple of hours. Some wanted Shortcake to win so they could follow her into this new life because they were scared of what was outside. Others wanted to go to a place they knew would be safe, but they were too scared to say something to Shortcake. All of them looked up to her, either because she was the best pony from their class or because she was the kind of pony who could lead. Shortcake was the kind of pony who had confidence in herself, and that confidence is what helped all the ponies here get through the tough times in life. Finally, Shortcake whispered, I'm scared. The world outside is not known to us. What if this Empress turns out to be evil? What if I bring them right into a trap? One where they'll either be killed or put back into a place like this. That's the risk every leader has to face. You never know what'll happen next. Sometimes both paths you take will suck. The difference is that will you be strong enough to face it? If you're still not sure, then look at it this way. I trust Empress Sheena. Stardust trusts me to make the right call with this. You don't know me or Sheena, but you do know Stardust. Would he put all of you at risk for no reason? No. He's a good stallion. Loyal to a T. That's what made him a good friend. Then trust Stardust's choice. Yield and we can put this foolishness behind us and move forward to a better life. I felt her body was slack as she said, Fine. I yield. But I pray that I'm making the right choice. I let her go. You are. For a long moment, the cadets all looked at the two of us. Then finally, they started stomping their hooves on the floor in applause. Stardust flew over to me, a healing potion in hoof. Damn, Shadow, that was badass. 
I drank the healing potion as I responded. No, it wasn't. It was stupid, but I'm glad it worked. Stardust offered me a potion, uh, offered a potion to start a shortcake, who took it and drank it as well. Thanks, Dusty. Sorry being such a bitch before. Really good to see you again. He blushed. It's okay. I know how you get when you're angry. A lot's happened today. It's all a little hard to take in. To my utter surprise, Shortcake started to giggle. Dusty, you still blush like a colt who just got kissed by the mayor he likes. It's cute. That just made him blush more. I don't blush. Stallions like me don't ever blush. I looked over at Shortcake, who was also looking at me. Then at the same time, we burst into laughter. As Stardust... An hour later, Major Vaz was able to get the last of the Pegasus power armor rebooted. They were now leading the last of the ponies that led Stable 97 out through the now open door. Stardust, Shortkick, and I used the time to load up as many of the weapons, as ammo as we can, from the storage rooms and whatever else the cadets could carry to their new home in the kingdom. Solstice went through the cadets' power armor and removed the tracking device on them so they could bring them with them if they wanted. Turns out, she was an expert on power armor. Who knew? Stardust and I went back to medical, mainly to stock up on the medicals that we could use, but also to make sure that the memory machine was destroyed by the C4. Luckily, all that was left was mostly scrap metal and broken glass, though I was worried somebody from the Enclave would be able to fix it somehow, or Wolfsbane if he found his way into the stable. From what Major Vass told me, Nightshade wasn't going to let the Enclave use the stable ever again, but he was still new to power. Pegasi, like Captain Plank, were still up there, and they wouldn't just do whatever they were told by his new High Council pony. I was going to have to figure something out for this thing before we left for good. So I spent the rest of the time helping the cadets get ready for the trip we were about to take. I had to calm down a few of them. First time they met Windthrasher, though. One of the cadets saw that she was just as scared of them as they were of her. They warmed up to her pretty quickly. Though Wind Thrasher kept hanging out as close as she could to Stardust. It was like she was scared to leave his side around the other highly trained soldiers. It's odd how one minute she can be a badass killer and the next she's the shy mare in the room. Definitely a strange mare, but that's why we love her. Getting the cadets to leave the stable was harder than I thought at first. Most of them stood near the open stable door, looking out at the mostly empty storage room like it was going to explode when they left. It looked, took a lot of coaxing from Stardust, Solstice, Doorstop, and Shortcake to finally make them all take the first step out. Finally, one by one, the young Pegasi left the stable. I waited next to the terminal for the door controls, with Windthrasher sitting next to me. He's going to be hide for them for a while, she said as we watched them file out. Yeah, but they'll manage. Look at you. You managed to do fine on the outside. Yeah. But I wanted to leave my stable for years. I lost my fear on the outside world after having to live with Dr. Cell and his monster for so long. I figured that if I ever got free of his control, the outside world would be better than Stable 9. Wish I was like that. Even though I knew I wasn't from Stable 28 when I left, it still scared me to go into the wasteland. She smiled. You're just a filly. I'm sure going out into the on your own was scary no matter what. I'm a little older than you are. Things like that get easier with age. In my stable, I wasn't a filly anymore. By my stable standards, you're a few years shy of being an adult. Though nowadays, I wouldn't say you're a filly. You did have to grow up a lot to survive out there. She looked over at me. What are we going to do about this place? I looked down at the Mark II. I've been thinking about that. I'm worried that some pony might find their way here and figure out how to fix the memory machine or use it as a blueprint on how to make their own. Some pony like Elder's Wolfsbane? I nodded. There's something about him that I don't trust. Same goes for Nightshade. I think they're both hiding something and I don't like it. I don't know what it is yet, but I do know that I don't like either of them getting into the stable. You can always talk to the survivors and see if they want their home back? When Thrasher suggested. No, after what we did there, I don't want to go anywhere near those nutjobs. The best thing we can do is seal the stable, just like Stable 9. 
Windthrasher thought about that for a moment, then said, I disagree with you. If the kind of ceiling you mean is blowing up the stable like you did with Nine. I laughed pretty hard at that. You're funny, Windthrasher. You're a funny mare. I teased. No, nothing like that. She laughed with me. Good. It's better to keep this place sealed away from the world. That way no pony can ever see what's in here again. That's what I was thinking, too. The last of the cadets finally made it past the threshold of the stable door. Stardust poked his head in and said, You two coming or what? Be right there. Okay. Hurry it up, though. I'd like to get as far away from this place as I can. He said as he walked back out of the stable. I looked down at the terminal, then my pit buck. This shouldn't be too hard. Windthrasher smiled, her toothy smile. I'll go keep Stardust distracted for a minute while you finish up. Thanks, Windthrasher. I hugged her quickly, then waited for her to walk out from the stable. While she was gone, I hooked the Mark II into the terminal on the door. As I thought, it only took a minute for me to place the seal on the door. It would activate as soon as the door was closed. I also made sure that only the Mark II could reopen the stable via a broadcaster. When I was finally finished, I pulled the lever and shut the door. As the drill moved into place, I started to shut the gear-shaped door. I made my way down to it and walked out. Once I was past the threshold, I turned and watched as the door rolled into place and was pushed into its final position. Then I felt a hoof on my shoulder as Stardust said, Feels good to be saying goodbye to this place once and for all. I turned and hugged my best friend. I don't know. I think it feels better to have you back. He laughed, then placed a hoof on my head. Ditto. We all walked back out into the wasteland, where the Enclave soldiers were loading the ponies that led the stable into the sky carriage. I noticed Dr. Limbus wasn't with them. In fact, I hadn't seen her since she left with the rest of my friends before the attack. I looked at Doorstop, who was standing next to me. Where, Doctor? I don't want her to get captured by the Enclave. I told her where the kingdom is and put a marker on her pip-buck. As far as the Enclave knows, she was one of the ponies who died during the fighting. I smiled. She's a nice mare. I'm glad she'll finally be able to get free from the job she hated so much. Same here. I think I'm going to have her come back to Frosty Summit with me when we head back home. Violet could use a good doctor like her. I grinned. Do you like her doorstop? He glared at me, then shook his head. Not at all. At least not in the way you're thinking. She's always been a nice mare, even to a grunt, hard-assed pony like me. She was also my sister's best friend. I couldn't let something bad happen to her. Besides, it wasn't her fault she was forced to do what she did. I guess that makes sense. Wait! You have a sister?! I almost yelled. The doorstop covered my muzzle with a hoof. The doorstop looked back at Stardust and Solstice, who were talking to a few of the cadets not far away from us. Yes, I do. But keep that to yourself. I haven't seen my family in over twenty years. I don't need the cadets or Solstice asking me any kinds of silly questions. He moved his hoof away from my muzzle. Does your sister even know you're alive? He looked around again, then said, She's the one who put me here. She heard about the program and wanted me to keep an eye on things. I think she really wanted me to make sure Limbus was okay. She knows I was branded as well. Your sister must be important to know much about the program. He smiled at me. No. But she is a smart mare that puts her nose where it doesn't belong. But let's drop it. Maybe one day I'll tell you more about my family. I don't know how I feel about knowing two Pegasus I was secrets about their past. At least Laserlight was a little open to me about herself before she left. Doorstop smirked. Sometimes secrets keep us safe. Laserlight knows this very well. Well, maybe you will also tell me when you're... how you know so much about other things, like a pony like you shouldn't know, when you were trapped in a stable for over 20 years? I said. Maybe even that too, he said with a hearty laugh. I've got to make sure the cadets are ready to head out. Okay. I need to ask Mr. Vash something anyway, before we leave as well, I said. Don't take too long. I nodded and made my way over to the Major, who was checking with his troops, to make sure everything was ready to go. Major Vass? I... can I bother you for a moment? He turned around and looked back at me. I have to be off soon, so do make it quick, Courier. I have to know. 
Is what you said in the stable true? Did Nightshade really say that I'm free of the Enclave's wrath? He nodded. That's what he told me. I'm not sure why, but he seemed hell-bent on trying to fix a lot of what's been done since the last council was broken. He's working with a new negotiation with New Pegasus, for one. He's also trying to find some kind of place, a peace with the Cloud Cities to the east. Personally, Courier, I think it's a mistake. What, making peace with the other cities? I asked. No, letting you go. I've seen the damage you can do. It both frightens me and makes me want you dead. If he didn't well, tell me to leave you be, I'd have you killed as soon as I saw you, Courier. He said, his voice never growing angry. I took a step back. Just like that? Even though you're scared of what I'll do? I'm a soldier, not a politician. I take orders and I follow them, Courier. My personal feelings don't get in the way of orders. Maybe one day I'll change my mind about you. But for now, I'd rather not see you ever again. I guess that's better than sending the sins after me or killing me outright. He turned his back to me and started to walk away. The seven sins of equinity are scum, Courier. They no longer represent the Enclave. I'd like to see them all die as much as you. He stopped, then looked back at me, pulling a small box out of his pocket. And that's right. I almost forgot. Nightshade wanted me to give this to you. He said to watch it when you had free time. He set the box down and walked away. A moment later, they all took off and headed to the cloud layer. Once they were gone, I walked over and picked up the box in my hooves. When I opened it, I saw what was inside. It was a memory orb, on top of which were two notes. One said it was from Nightshade, but the other didn't say who it was from. It looked a lot older than the first, and all that was written on it was, To Star. I wanted so badly to read both of these notes, or maybe even dive into the memory orb. Instead, I put them into my saddlebags. Right now, I had more important things to do. First things first. It's time to go back to the kingdom and see Aura. You ready to go, Shadow? Stardust yelled. Turning towards my friends, I smiled, feeling somehow better than I have in days. You know it. Let's go. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. N interrogator. If you have an active imagination, you can get away anything out of any pony. Even if an enemy is captured alive, you can interrogate them for information. And depending upon what you do, you might even get information. However, this perk does not work with young children of any race.